One of the most frequent scenarios in the current economic circumstances is what I call the bee paradox. My father-in-law is an expert beekeeper who has been producing raw and unfiltered mountain honey for over two decades, and I learned from him how amazing creatures bees are and how intelligent they behave to maintain and grow their families. However, there's a situation where bees usually get stuck. And I'm pretty sure that most of you have seen this, especially in springtime. The window of your room is tilted open and the bee flies in. After making a few rounds inside the room, it tries to go out. Nine out of 10 times, the bees will not be able to do that and will fly directly into the window. Bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. Usually, this is the moment when you realize that you have a bee in your room and these intelligent creatures can struggle on the window for hours if you don't help them. They will keep trying to push through the window. So on the one hand, we have these amazing and intelligent creatures and on the other hand uh, we have its limited behavior pattern that doesn't help it to get out even though it flew in the room easily so bees get blinded by the light by the way of course other insects do this as well but why i call this phenomenon the bee paradox is because bees are considered more intelligent than most flying insects and that's what I saw last year and this year. Brands that had proven track record in their traditional business models, companies who put both hard and intelligent work to their development, now when they are forced to digitalize, they hit the window and bzz, 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 keep on struggling without taking a step back to look where the opportunities are and where are the possibilities to get out of the limitations, to get out from the imaginary walls uh, that were built the last two years? These brands see digital as the light, but they don't see how the window is blocking them. They want to digitalize, they try to do it, but most of them fail badly. That's because most of the time to tackle these barriers requires a mindset shift. By the way, you can check my video about why digital transformation requires more than technology here. So back to the mindset shift. Similar to the few bees who managed to fly back and find a way out, leaders need to do the same. This is hard to do, not because stepping back is a big thing, but because they think in the same pattern as before. They're trying to solve the problems in the same manner as before, and it won't work. And while this video is not enough to break such mental patterns, I want to give you three cornerstones for starting the change in mentality. Here's the first. Leaders who succeed in digital understand and embrace this. Why traditional models could be built layer by layer, gaining experience and paving the road mile by mile. Forging the path for a digital business model is different due to the rapid evolution of technology that creates fast changes in the digital economy. A pattern that worked today might not have the same results in 12 months. It can be worse and sometimes it can be even better. The second thing is that strategy was key before and is key today. However, how you build a digital business strategy is different from the one for a traditional. While there are many differences, I want to focus on one today. How to plan the ROI or the return on investment. In a conventional business model, a good return on investment is considered to be everything that performs better than portfolio investments. Portfolio investments can be stocks, bonds, real estate, or even other businesses, basically anything that has a positive ROI. Most of the time, in a traditional investment, the annualized ROI has a steady or slightly growing yearly rate. But let's take a simplified example. You invest $100,000 in the first year, and then you invest another thousand each year, and this in total is forecasted to deliver 150,000 in five years in the following model. First year, 15K, second year, 20K, third year, 25K, fourth year, 30K, 
and fifth year $35,000 of revenue. So in this example, your five year return on investment is 20%. Now let's look at the simplified example of ROI in digital. Here you invest starting from $40,000 in the first year to $100,000 in the fifth year. That is a total of $330,000 that is forecasted to deliver $430,000 as follows. First year, no revenue. Second year, 20K. Third year, 35K. Fourth year, 120K. And fifth year, 255K dollars of revenue. So in this example, your five-year ROI is 30%. If we compare how the yearly revenue looks in the two models, traditional has steady but linear growth. In contrast, digital has an uncertain start but aggressive growth in the later stage. But if we compare how the yearly investment looks in the two models, traditional starts with heavy investment but low maintenance, while digital might start lower but needs growing investment. Remember, these are simplified examples. The reality is more complex than that. But I want you to learn three things. Number one, it's a misconception that digital delivers results immediately. There are some exceptions, but the growth in digital in the first stage might seem uncertain. And that is normal, but it's not considered normal in the traditional landscape. The second one, digital investment is not cheap. I'm not talking here about one-man shows and mini startups who create small businesses fast. I'm talking here about enterprise-level digital transformation, companies that have built their brand and have a strong history, but now are facing massive pressure due to the pandemic. Don't expect that your digital growth will cost less than the traditional one. And the third one, in the long run, you should have higher expectations, for example, higher ROI compared to traditional investments. When a digital model starts gaining, it can be scaled a lot faster. So a quick wrap up. So far, I explained how patterns of growth are different, how strategy and thus investment is different. And I want to end with a short one, but a very critical one. The third cornerstone that you can use to start shifting your mentality is this. Unfortunately, your company's experience in its traditional business model won't help you, or even worse, it can block your vision. However, what you can build on are your industry insights. But how do you build an industry insights without using the knowledge of the old model? Through pilots. A proper digital strategy uses pilots in the uncertain stages. This way you cap your risks. If you're not sure what pilots are and how to use them, drop me a message on LinkedIn. Also, if you're interested in learning how to start your digital transformation, subscribe here on YouTube or follow me on LinkedIn as I will soon talk more about this topic.